Hey, good morning. Um, today we are here with Jana Schmidt, who's going to be sharing with us um, some dyslexia information and her, um, about her book. And you are a wealth of knowledge, Jana, so we're happy to have you here. And I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Shana, for inviting me today. Um, as she said, my name is Jana Schmidt, and I've worked in the state of Missouri for many years in the area of professional development. Um, I worked uh, through the RPDCs and through the University of Missouri uh, to go out to school districts and actually do um, different types of professional development work. Part of that was around RTI and MTSS. And through that process, uh, we ended up thinking about um, really the idea of how do we uh, link our reading data to our reading interventions and make sure that that is an accurate match. So today, uh, through years of that process and different forms of that process, I'll share with you one, uh, our, our final version of that, which is called the columns. And so, which is really just matching reading data to intervention. So, and one of the things that we know is that the right data provides a picture of how well a student is performing in the five components of reading. We know those components are phonological awareness, phonics, vocabulary, fluency, comprehension, um, as described by the National Reading Panel uh, years ago. And so uh, we want to do those quick checks along the way for that. Um, our state dyslexia law also says that we need to have those quick checks and then be able to uh, intervene on, on those characteristics of dyslexia, which includes those five components of reading. So the first thing we have to do is really look at our universal screeners. What are those assessment pieces that all students get? Uh, these universal screener, screeners are usually systematic and quick. Um, it could be anything from Ames Web Plus to Devils to other types of assessments, but they're usually very short. Um, and there's something that all students receive, usually at those benchmark periods three times per year. A second layer of that are the classroom diagnostics. And their goal is to really find where in that scope and sequence of skill that uh, we see students' needs develop. Uh, usually that's in the areas of phonics or in the areas of phonological awareness. Uh, there's lots of phonics surveys that are around. So um, there's the 95% group PSI or the really great reading company also has a phonics survey. And all it does is start with the very basic pieces of phonics. It might be letter ID, letter sound, all the way through to uh, consonant vowel consonant sounds, maybe on up into vowel teams, on up into multisyllabic words. And so it gives a sequence of skills and says, okay, where in that scope and sequence do, do we start to see kids have real needs and still have some holds, basically. The other part of this is the uh, phonological awareness surveys. And that does the same thing that we were talking about in phonics, but it just does it in phonological or phonemic awareness. So it starts with some very basic skills, usually with larger chunks of sound like syllables, onset and rhyme, and then goes down into phonemic awareness, which is usually individual units of sound and seeing if kids are able to manipulate that. So the difference really there between phonics and phonological is that phonics has the letter hook to it, but if I take away the work with letters and work just with sounds, that becomes a phonological awareness activity. So we've had our universal screener, and then we look to those classroom diagnostics to really pinpoint the need for kids. So then how do we hook all of that together to, with what do we need to do? So, um, and again, one of the things uh, we can really say within a school district is what system is set up to make sure that we hook that data to the right interventions. How can we help to guarantee that teachers get and understand what that assessment data is telling them and then how does that hook to the intervention that matches what that data says. And so we need to build systems within our schools to be able to help us to do that. So this, uh, you know, basically I'll describe a process to you called the columns. Um, and again, you can see where over here we've started with our assessment data and really looking at it. But we have our intervention data over here. And uh, why did we really uh, create those? Was that uh, we knew that in the districts that I was working in, in particular, 
that they would get, sometimes teachers would get very good at assessment. They would get very good over here at intervention, but then sometimes there was a lapse in between as far as making sure the need that we saw in the assessment was actually um, uh, linked to that correct intervention. So it's just like going to a doctor, and let's say you went to a doctor with a broken leg and you came out with a prescription for the flu. Um, so in other words, it's like, yes, the assessment is pinpointing a need. The prescriptions, either prescription might, get, might be right, but you might not have hit the right need with the right um, thing to fix it. So what we saw in school is that sometimes that these were not being connected well. So the columns are there to help us be able to do that. So we have the columns. I'll show you an example of it here in just a minute. Um, there are different columns for different grade levels. So there's one for grades two through five. There's also another one for kindergarten. And there's also one for uh, two different versions for first grade. Uh, one of the reasons for that is we know that when kindergarten starts, starts so those very uh, young, um, young ages, they have a lot of different skills that they have to learn. So we check on some of those skills, but by the time you get to uh, mid first grade, you're really checking to see more on that um, reading and combining all those skills into that reading process. So therefore we've got our columns to really change to meet the needs of those particular grade levels. Um, the columns were, they're basically just a tool that you'll see and you can adjust them to your district. So different districts in, in our state, in Missouri, have different um, sets of assessments that they use. Um, so they might have a different screener or they might have different classroom diagnostics, but you can adjust the columns to basically fit your particular district. Um, the columns, what we've also noticed about the columns is that you can plug in some of the information, but again, they'll be refined as you continue to use them. You'll start to see the holes within maybe some of your assessments. You might figure out like, oh, I've got um, assessments for this piece or this piece, but I don't really have that good classroom diagnostic down here. Maybe that's something you need to add. Or as you start to do interventions, you might say, okay, well, we've got interventions to really help us with this component, but we might not have another, um, we might need something else to help uh, may basically make sure that our kids have a different skill. So let's take a look at the columns. And I'll blow it up just a little bit. So you can see it and I'll move our picture up. There we go. Um, so there's two pages to these particular columns. I'll move it over. And you can see here at the top of the column, I'll even make it a little smaller. So at the top of the column then, this is column one. And so column one includes those students that are, uh, basically they can read like words off the page like the wind. They sound, they're very fluent, they have phonics, they have phonological, they have all those skills taken care of. Um, this column, if you look, in other words, we have up here at the top, we have the description of a column. We also have then the data that goes with that particular uh, column itself. So if they're above the 40th percentile, that's on there. We have the instructional focus for it, and then we actually have maybe the work that that particular column would do. What is the focus for that? And then you can list student names. Um, this particular column has two places. One is for those that are, they have basic comprehension, they can, um, they can retell, they can do literal questions, those kinds of things, but they might need to work on standards such as um, they might need to work on main idea and detail. They might need to work on point of view, those kinds of things, the, the standards that are listed in our Missouri Learning Standards. Uh, the bottom of this column is for those kids that sound really pretty, right? They, if you had them read aloud, they sound great. Um, but here at the bottom um, of this column, basically, these are the kids that still have some issues with just that basic comprehension piece. They couldn't retell if you ask them a question that was just a very basic question from what they've read, they can't answer that. Um, so they spend a lot of their cognitive um, space in their brains when they're reading, actually just getting the words off and it sounds great, but they aren't attending to the comprehension pieces. So this first column is really comprehension and, and looking at that. The second column here is dedicated more to fluency. 
So these are kids that if we look at their screeners, they might fall just below that, uh, that proficiency range. So for, in this example, and again, different, you could put in different screeners, you could put in whatever your district has, but basically you put your data here and you say, okay, let's say you're wanting kids to be at the 40th percentile. So these are the kids that might fall just a little bit below. There could be some outliers to that. Um, these are kids that also would likely have taken a phonics survey or a phonological survey and they come out clean. In other words, they don't have any issues with phonics or phonological. They have all those basic skills. They just aren't reading fluently and maybe up to a rate of reading that we would want. Um, and again, fluency also includes, you know, do they read word by word with some phrasing? Do they speed read? Do they adjust their rate for comprehension? We still want them to do that. And does their rate impact their accuracy? So some, just some things to consider with these, these kids. And again, you might have different interventions that are in your district. This is one example, but you might have others that could help students that might help with those fluency pieces. So your intervention tools here, and then you would just list student names down below that. Um, one more page here. The last page are the kids that have some more in-depth issues. Um, the column three basically looks at where, when students have phonics needs, and they also might possibly have phonological awareness needs. So these kids, again, we're gonna list their data, whatever data you have with whatever screeners you have. We can say, okay, these kids are between maybe the 11th and 24th, but you might also find some outliers beyond that. Um, so, but they're falling low on maybe an oral reading type of um, assessment. And then you've given them the phonics survey and you found some holds within that phonics survey. You can see that's the diagnostic where we're, we're finding some of those pieces. And so the reason they're slow is because they're having trouble with their phonics pieces that they're really looking at. So you've identified where those phonics pieces are. Um, they also would have a phonological awareness survey. So you might pull out and um, look and see where some of those holes are. And then you could look, actually hook it to our phonics and phonological interventions that you have. And again, plug in your district's inter interventions. Uh, this is where you might have some discussions in your building about, do you have some of these things? Do you have some things that address phonics or phonological? Um, and so some examples are here, Sound Partners Foundations. Uh, there's various ones, Just Words is another one. Uh, the phonological awareness pieces, Hegarty is another one, Equipped for Reading Success is by David Kilpatrick. Um, those are just some examples, but again, you list yours. And then kids that have uh, phonics needs only out of this column can be listed here, or if they have some phonics and phonological issues for this, then we can list them here. Um, the last column on here is, again, one that has phonics needs and phonological awareness needs. They do ha definitely have both. These are the kids that are sometime below that 10th percentile. Um, they are kids with our greatest needs. Um, when you give them, the, you know, so they come out very low on a screener. They also, when you give them a phonics survey or a phonological survey, they have definite needs that you can see and very basic needs. So this might, this could be the fourth grader that still doesn't have first grade phonological awareness skills. Or this could be the, you know, third grader that still is struggling with uh, basic uh, consonant vowel consonant types of skills. And then here is where you actually have, um, again, the interventions from your district, and then uh, again, and then you list student names for phonics only. And honestly, most of the time these kids will be down here. And so the difference between these two columns then is like these kids are much farther along in the skill sequence but still have needs. These are at our very basic levels. And so um, and so then we group them in that manner. So one of the purposes then for doing this then is to really say, how does that fit within your RTI MTSS system? And so we're going back to that process of creating a system. So teachers, the first time they run through this, sometimes have, um, again, some, some, they learn to do the process, but then they refine it and it gets very simple for them and very quick as far as being able to plug in kids on this and then think about how do we as a building address those issues together with the needs that we have seen. All right, so that's kind of a quick view of that. I'll go back to this. 
And again, we give more information um, in, in this particular book. Um, my contact information is there as well as my phone number and email. And um, again, this is a resource that I've written with uh, Jill Dunlap Brown. So, all right, Shauna, what questions do you have? Well, first of all, what an amazing resource. I love that you've really systematized for schools. Um, because I think everyone probably has some universal screeners and diagnostics in place, but there's that gap in, okay, but how do we systematically look at that information, um, organize it, and then provide interventions to kids? So I love your solution of columns because not only does it help with being able to delineate kids into a specific place of what the four groups you might have. I mean, you're really given a system of, okay, my kids are probably going to fall into one of these four groups. But I also love that within the columns, in my opinion, as a curriculum person, you're building some content knowledge of the reading process, which we don't always get in college. I was a first grade teacher who didn't know how to teach kids how to read because I didn't have all of the information that was listed in your columns. You know, it's taken me 20 years to now understand, oh, there's this continuum, the scope and sequence of phonological awareness. And I love that your columns provide that information. So you're really building the skill set of teachers as well, of here is the continuum you need to bring kids along in the reading process. So I think it's fabulous. Um, so I guess my question is, you alluded to at the end, um, you have created this process and it's within your book. If districts were interested and they say, hey, I want to use columns, would your suggestion be um, I would get a copy of the book and so then you could look at the columns and create that electronically uh, for your district or do you have other suggestions to districts on what their next steps might be? Yeah, and I think the first thing is, yes, so it would provide a good base of information. And like I said, if, if anybody has questions about um, the process or how to get that process started, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to chat with you. Um, and then, uh, and really just giving that first, that audit of what assessments do we have? And are we able to get that information? So sometimes when it's starting off, it's not necessarily starting off with the connecting piece. It's starting off with looking at our assessments and evaluating the assessments, then evaluating and seeing what interventions do we have that actually address that, and then being able to pull that together with teachers as a next third step. So first look at assessments, then look at interventions, play with those, get teachers, get teachers in a building very good with that, and then um, really think about those columns as far as like how do we connect that information and just getting a process and a system set up. And usually when the first implementation, it takes a little bit longer to get that started. But once it is started, then teachers get much more effective and um, not effective, but just quicker with doing the process because it becomes more automatic. So some foundational things. First, we need to say, hey, do our current assessments, do we have those things in place? They could look in your, you gave some great examples in there. I was writing some down for some of the schools that I work with. Um, and saying, do we have assessments in place to get the correct information? Are we using interventions? Let's start building that in our people. And then the other piece is, you know, you mentioned RTI, MTSS, and I also wrote down, that could be in your small group too. If you're a district who hasn't implemented a full RTI model, in my yes. opinion, that would be, hey, if you're doing guided reading or small group instruction, you could yes. Im implement that within small group. But we have to yes. have those foundational tools of assessment interventions before mm -hmm. you columns. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much. And I'm glad. So um, Jana has her contact information, but um, I know I'm going to be getting a copy of your book as well to learn more. So thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you so much, Shana. Thank you for having me.